Hello, Hi. Hello. Cassie. Hello, Ginger. How are you? <laughs> are you well? Very nice. Thank you so much. You. Yes. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me back. I grateful. Um, sorry, here we're just getting this like this. Just a straight. small note to make for those who didn't see our first video. I would suggest that they look at our very interesting first conversation on the mythology behind the, the planets, the constellations. It was pretty free conversation we had. Yeah, it was a great conversation. Thank you. And uh, it was a long conversation. So if you if you actually got through it, thank you very much. We were there were many things to discuss um, with Crassy. And um, I love the fact that she has all of this, this uh, knowledge uh, that somehow overlaps you know, very well with the uh, mythology and, um, um, and again, you can't speak about often or exclusively mythology without the philosophy. So what about um, Venus and Jupiter? Um, I like how, um, so Crassy, like quickly, um, in Babylonian mythology, uh, Jupiter would be represented by Marduk. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. And so Venus would be represented, represented, representative By of which, which, which divinity? It will be Ishtar, of course. We know about Ishtar, Inanna. We said briefly that we had Venus as a morning star, represented by Inanna from Akkad. Right. Then you have Venus evening star, represented by Inanna from Uruk. And then you have Venus invisible when... She descends into the nether world, and this is Ereshkigal or Ishthara. Okay, so question. When Venus actually is, encounters Jupiter or Marduk, how is she, how do we perceive her? In which divine form are we perceiving her? Like well, when the two planetary bodies like are conjunct, when, when they come together in the sky, this is considered a very positive uh, divine conjunction, of course. Two sure. benefic planets, and it is certainly not what the contemporary astrology says, like planetary war or such thing. It is a beautiful divine conjunction, which has really bl a powerful blessing quality. It's like, imagine two gods, good gods, those who help humanity are coming together to they meet and if they're on a key place in the horoscope they will bless yes. the, the native it's even said that when there is a trine between jupiter and venus when there is a conjunction in a good position in the horoscope the it said the prayers of the native will be heard by the gods well that's quite um Quite a pre, pre, quite a pre-Socratic omen, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have a question for you. So, fine. So, if, for instance, they're they're conjunct in the sky, and they bestow this, um, you know, these all of their benefic qualities upon us. But what if they're conjunct in um, um, a chart within a synergetic chart? How would that be interpreted um, from a sidereal perspective? If Venus and Jupiter, would, they, would it be perceived as, um, because, you know, in Greek mythology, we see Venus as the daughter, one of the daughters of Zeus or Jupiter, and Aphrodite being the daughter of Z uh, Zeus or Theus. But in Babylonian um, mythology, would that be considered like husband and wife? How could you, how would one interpret that? Now, Venus is a uh, uh, sister of the, of, the, of the sun, of Utu, Shamash, and they are children of the lunar god. So, and Marduk is a child of Enki, mm -hmm. and they actually, all, the, they, all these gods, you know, they have some sort of linkage. But of course, they are not, sure. yes, of course, they are not perceived as husband and wife. Marduk is the one who saved humanity from the chaos because, you know, he overpowered, he destroyed Tiamat, the, the, the dragon, the destruction. Uh, um, well, it was, 
this is the uh, this is a dragon on the sky which is represented by uh hydra you know the long dragon on the sky so, so that is a very that's a let me stop you there for a second that's a very interesting um comment or very 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 interesting footnote um because there is um in biblical mythology um the, the judeo christian biblical mythology or the bible if you will um there are there are references um specifically in revelation or is it revelations yes i think it's yeah the last book of revelations um, i think it's book 12 um that talk about the archangel michael who battles a dragon in the sky that's kind of curious that's an interesting um overlap go on let's let's no, that, that's pretty much this. He overpowered the dragon, and the dragon, you can see even Marduk. Um, there are ancient cuneiform texts, and you can see why actually the ideal exaltation uh, of Jupiter around the year of minus 800 something is, yes. is in cancer because this Tiamat, the dragon. So, so basically, so um, 800 um, something, 860 BC. BC, right? Okay. Right. So, Tiamat, uh -huh. so you can see you, from the mythology, we know that Marduk saved humanity from the chaos, Tiamat. And uh -huh. that is why his best ideal exaltation is above Tiamat, and this is happening in Cancer. So this is one of the, uh, uh, one of the ideas behind the exaltation of Jupiter, the ideal exaltation, which, as we said last time, moves from era to era, from, you know, but this is another story. You wanted to know the um, uh, story behind the Mesopotamian nature of, of Marduk, Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I think it's fascinating. I thank you so much for mentioning that because I do think there is um, a curious overlap in mythologies. Um, what is the story in the Greek and, mythology then? And also the link between, how it develops the link between Venus and Jupiter then? Okay, so, the, okay, so not Greek mythology, but um, in biblical, Judeo um, Christian biblical mythology, um, there is again, uh, <laughs> curiously, an, an, in a similar-ish time, there is this um, reference to what we know as, or what is being called Archangel Michael, um, battles this like demon, this serpent demon dragon in the sky and defeats him, mm. which without having look, seen the Babylonian text, I, I mean, I couldn't say, but it sounds quite, quite like a curious, um, and in that, and that being representative of chaos, if you will. So he defeats and restores order um, to what potentially um, could have ensued as like chaos on earth. Wow. Is that right? This is so interesting what you just said. So I feel perhaps this is a, um, a point of interest to look further into um, in translation. And I would love to hear more about what you said. Um, as far as... Um, um, the Greek mythology, you know, the, the Panellinian, um, the Pantheon rather, Greek mythology, um, we know classically that Aphrodite or Venus, as the Romans call her, um, is a child of Zeus or Jupiter, and um, as well as Athena Pallas, uh, again, the virgin child of um, Zeus. Um, you know, interesting, not entirely the same parallel as you've just discussed with Marduk um, and this dragon. Um, but uh, the conjunction, um, I don't think we see, and, and I, I'm not saying it, it, there, there is no allusion to, but because there's often um, in Greek mythology as well as other mythologies, the overlapping of um, siblings, um, marrying one another, like we see in Egyptian myth mythology, um, the Isis, Osiris, um, who, who, who come together as husband and wife, but they're actually siblings to begin with. Um, and, and this is not unusual. I suspect in um, Babylonian, um, as you said, there's similar uh, overlap 
and divinities, uh, the siblings that unite. Yes, yes. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't recall anything um, specifically on the. the ah, I lost you. Get, hold on for a second. Give me a second. I'm good. Yes, yes. Please go ahead, uh, Ginger. Please. So, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so I don't recall um, any particular allusion in, in Greek mythology that speaks about um, Zeus and Aphrodite coming together in partnership other than father and child. Um, uh, but I have heard it said, certainly in Vedic mythology, um, as well as Vedic observational astronomy, they speak about how the conjunction in one's chart of Venus and Jupiter and synastry is quite an important marker um, for uh, partnership, life partnership, you know, if you will. So I was wondering how you saw it um, and you interpreted it from a mythological perspective to a sidereal um, um, interpretation in a chart. Yes, uh, you will not see any evidence in the, in the ancient horoscopes which are found of synastries. Maybe they never made synastries at that time. They would look at horoscopes of kings, of events, mundane. They would uh, follow sure. up. Or they would make an ideal calendar and they would look at the celestial events which would have certain importance for the king, the king, and again the king, you know. But synastry, I have never heard of synastry in the ancient world. So of Mesopotamia. So what we can do is we can just derive from mythology and when we analyze the horoscopes, make our own judgment. So what you're saying, yes, since we know the divine blessing nature of both Jupiter, Marduk and Ishtar, yes, uh, it will certainly be blessing when they are either conjoined in a synastry or if they are in a trine when comparing two horoscopes, but more I cannot say because I have no facts which say in this particular ancient synastry they said this. Yes. Thing. So yeah, I, but I, I do find it interesting your comments uh, simply about how because they are both divine benef beneficiaries um, and they bestow many blessings upon um, the people or the persons. Um, you know, if you were looking at, for instance, um, you know, uh, a nobleman's chart um, in the day, the Babylonian day of, and then you're looking at, um, you know, another chart, and you notice that, for instance, in, I don't know, um, in Jupiter, Jupiter was in the house of Virgo, if you will, and then, you know, so someone to be married or betrothed was... Um, had a Venus in the same placement. In fact, let's even go here. I love the fact that you, you speak about um, these fixed royal stars, um, uh, these four fixed royal stars, which are what Regulus, um, help me out here. They form, they form, they form, a, they form a cardinal cross. They form in, a cross, yeah. That's right. Or a cross. I'm not sure if it's technically cardinal, but it, they form a cross on the astrological um, placement of a chart. And Regulus is really quite. I mean, well, I I would ask you to talk to to us about the importance of Regulus first, and then I will ask the question, <laughs> if you will. I mean, because like, what if like there's conjunction between Venus and Jupiter sitting on Regulus. Oh. Well, how would you, that is a very interesting like oh. synergy or chemistry. I would say more chemistry of um, you know um, the, all of that energy, the greater the greater aspects of that energy. How would you interpret that? This is just brilliant because this is the heart of the lion. So this is love, but not only love like the attraction, romance, sexual love between two people. If we're talking about yes. synastry and one would have Jupiter in, in Regulus and the other one would have Venus in Regulus. 
Dis- yeah, let's call it chemistry, even though it is technically called synastry in um, like the astrology, but but really the chemistry of like I would say this energetic is far, archetypes coming together. Yes, and this is coming far beyond chemistry only, because here you will have the heart of the lion. So these people are just like soulmates. It's happening in the heart. Their hearts are connected. It will be. The, it's blessed. This this relationship would be truly blessed by the gods. Okay, well that's that's quite fascinating. So, um, well, because of the Jupiter, or rather the the Jupiter Venus aspect, or because they're simply connected with Regulus. It is because if you don't even look at Regulus, though we have to. This is heart, the heart of the, this very powerful animal lion, which who has great heart. You know that the lion, for example, takes care of, 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 of his or her family, is the best parent, if you want, the lion. So he has a huge yeah. heart. Imagine the nature of the lion in the jungle, the protective nature of the lion in the jungle. And imagine what is happening if two benefits, the beneficiaries or benefics like Jupiter and Venus, either in conjunction or simply in a horoscope will meet there. This person, if not a synastry, but simply in a personal chart, will have golden heart, gold, heart of gold. This is one. And the other way around, you can see oftentimes Saturn afflicting the heart of the land. And if it's happening on the ascendant, I've seen people grieving for, in, for certain um, life problem until they're alive. It's, it, can, it can be also uh, the other way around. This can create, so this is the heart of the land. It's not just every heart. It's not the heart of the Gemini. It's not so the that's, heart. that's quite interesting. So you said if it basically falls upon the ascendant, it would cause it would be in uh, uh, um it would be afflicted is that right it is afflicted when afflicting planets like uh, like um uh, yes malefic planet is doing it uh, yes okay I if, understand. It is, uh, if it's benefic planet it is it is a pure blessing of a very you you don't see this it is so much of a blessing that i can tell you you don't see this uh, aspect happen Yes, I mean, okay, I've had had the opportunity to look at a few charts and I have to say I've seen it like on two occasions and I wasn't entirely sure how to in, to interpret it. Oh, I right. mean, you know, I know the mythology, at least the Greek mythology, um not knowing the um the Babylonian mythology you've just imparted which is even more um interesting um for various reasons. But yeah, I, and and I you thank you very much. You've shed a lot of light on the uh, on, on you know the broader picture because of the the fixed star Image. regulus. Not only yeah. this, look, Ginger. It's another thing also. You can imagine uh, what people what you said observational astronomy, and this makes perfect sense because yes. observe, observe the image. It's like if something is happening in the wings of the celestial woman, uh, Virgo. It is yes. divine. It is divine. These are the angelic wings. See, so we observe the sky, and if it's happening in the sexual organs of the of the Aries, it is having certain meaning. If it's having in the, it um, depends where on the back, in the neck of the of the animal of a person, because we have also people on the sky. It will you. you we try to interpret this. Um, Logically, that's you know, right. Like, that's, that's exactly right. You make a good point because sometimes you see too much. Well, at least sometimes you, you know, you get lost in the detail. You're not able to see the big picture. Yes, and you have to step yes. back. You're, you're absolutely right. Step back. Um, Look, for example, Venus. Since you're saying about such benefic, um, you're giving very benefic, beneficial example. But let's take a complex example. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think yes. uh, I think it's okay. Take a very interesting example which is very complex you see the goldfish and the goldfish on the sky it's capricorn goldfish yes half of the body half of the body is the gold with the wings right and then the other half the, the other half the second half of the body of capricorn is the tail of the fish right 
And then you have yes. this, uh, you have the horns. It is happening around 78 degree Capricorn. You have the horns. Put, yes. Venus, put Venus there and tell me what you think. I don't know what to think. I have to think about it. <laughs> well, oh, I, okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. That's a good point you make. Um, and there's a, <laughs> you make a very good point, Crassy. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I have to think about it, actually. Let's do this. I want to, um, there are a couple other topics that we discussed before we started to record that I look forward to um, talking about um, in the next video. Um, let's come back together and um, with this new information and then let's, like um bring it together and, and create like a, a third and see what sure. we get what do you think with is pleasure. that good with pleasure we're okay. opening doors for for thoughts now yes indeed okay very nice ginger so okay. we we'll complete here if you want and then we do uh soon continuation adding interesting yes please please and with and pleasure. um do, can you pause for a second would that be possible certainly okay thank you so much ginger so we opened this we we didn't finish it but we finished in another videos and thank you so much so we continue with the mythology and the, the natures of the planet. i thank you and I, I look forward to coming back to my notes regarding um your questions and um yes. a couple other um footnotes I we talked to about answer my question next time i will i will <laughs> i will thank you crassy thank okay. you bye-bye okay until soon thanks bye